So I've been working on my command line copilot. If you haven't seen this before, if I type out basically a question or some sort of command I need help with, control B, that's the old shortcut that will then go out to OpenAI and ask for a command in response to whatever question I have. As you could tell there, there's a little bit of a lag. About six seconds there. Not the end of the world, but I kind of wanted something that responded a bit faster, even if it's just in terms of perception. And so I thought, how about I use the streaming mode where I can dump out chunks as they arrive? And so I set up a new shortcut to do that. So here we go. Look how fast that responds. Let me do that again. Invoked. Look how fast that starts responding with the command. And of course, the longer the command, the more real time this is going to appear versus waiting for the whole command to complete and then dumping it out at once with my old shortcut. In other words, with shorter commands, probably not going to be as big of a difference. Nonetheless, the perception of this responding quicker is going to encourage me to use this, which means that I'm much more likely to take advantage of my little helper than if I perceive that it's going to take a long time to get a response. And so maybe I go off and do a Google instead of asking a question here first. Now, in order to set this up, I had to re-implement how it works. I've set it up as an iTerm script. So if you come up here to scripts, I can show you. I have a script just called Wes. Another way to look at that, if I do Option Command J to pull up the console, you can see the Wes script is running right here. And every time I invoke this, you can see I get a little bit of debug output in the logs here. So I've set this up as basically a plugin to iTerm. So I'm going to step through the implementation here if you're curious about this. First up, basically set up keyboard handlers so that when a key combination is hit, specifically Control Shift Command and B, that's my new shortcut. That invokes this Ask OpenAI. First thing I do here, basically get access to the iTerm session. And then I use iTerm to get the last prompt, which is whatever I've typed in. So over at the command line, if I say show me a really whatever, when I hit Control Shift Command B, Whatever I type there is going to be pulled into the prompt here. And then I'm going to extract that into the current command. So whatever command there is, that's what I'll be using then to ask a question. Further down then, once I've copied whatever is typed, I clear it out because I'm going to replace it in a moment here with the response. I then have a few variables I check. For example, what shell is being used. So fish shell in my case. Then grab the operating system. So Mac OS. I even look up the last command because that's available, though that's not necessarily relevant. So whatever last command was run. And then I have all of this code more or less to essentially decide which backend to use. So do I want to use OpenAI, Grok, or a local model with Olama or LM Studio? And then I create the API client. I formulate my message here. System message is the same. You're a command line expert. I expect to get back a single command and no markdown, please. And then the user request here first dumps in the shell, the operating system, that last command. So that's the context, if you will, because the answer might be different based on Mac or Windows or Fish versus Bash. And then at the end, that's where I put in the current command and I frame it as if it's a question. And this has worked really well in terms of a prompt across a variety of backends. All right, so then down below, I hit the API and I make that request for a completion. As that comes back then in the response, for each chunk that I get, I then go ahead and type that out as if it was the user typing that out at the command line. And thus I get the chunked response when I invoke my shortcut. And then a side effect of re-implementing this as an iTerm plugin, this addresses another problem I had, which was previously if I SSH'd out to a server and I wanted to ask a question, I'd have to have my little helper set up in this shell as well, and I'd have to have access to my credentials to get to one of the APIs. Now, because it's an iTerm plugin, all I have to do is set up the iTerm shell integration, just a simple script that can be installed. So I don't have to save passwords on each server. Instead, I could say install, maybe I forget which package this is in, control shift B. And there you go. I get back the solution, which is apt in this case. And if I split down below, install netstat. On the Mac side, I should get a different answer. And there you go. I get brew install and net tools which let's just check here and see if that's actually legit. Yeah, seems like it is. So if you're curious about the implementation of this, it is a bit custom to my environment, but you're welcome to take a look at my .files repo. If you look in iTerm scripts and then auto launch, 
under the West directory. The script has to be organized according to how iTerm defines environments, and I'm using a full environment so I can use Python packages. This is a bit convoluted, but at the end of the day, it's just this west.py script. So this little plugin starts up, it registers its keystroke handler, and then just waits for the keyboard shortcut to be invoked, and then dispatches accordingly. And also keep in mind, I have two other helpers in here as well for other little automations I added to iTerm. And then on the shell side of things, if I open up my fish configuration, here is the code to test if shell integration is installed on a machine. If so, go ahead and source it to basically load it. And then I have some custom variables that I set right at the start here, one of which is setting the operating system. And I set that one time, so I don't have to set that over and over again. And then iTerm shell integration has a feature where you can communicate variables by implementing this print user vars function and then invoking iTerm to set user variable. And so I set the shell here. I call it ask shell, so it's specific to my little ask helper. Set it to fish and I hard code that. And then I set the operating system as well. And so every time a prompt is generated, this function will be invoked to communicate this information to iTerm. And you can see that if you come into the console on iTerm, go to the inspector. You can see in either of these two environments, under the user variables, there's ask shell and that's fish. Ask OS is Mac OS, whereas the top tab, you can see it's fish and then Debian.